it's my 95th episode and my second year anniversary, and I still look younger than everybody in the room. What? Stay tuned next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Lives, breaking into. Forty-seven years later, is still relevant. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Listen to the lyrics to this song or this album. What's going on by Marvin Gaye? The whole album is still, in some way, sadly relevant yeah. today. Yeah. Hello, welcome to Breaking Into, and I'm your host James Law Jr. And it's my anniversary. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just very proud to be here two years later, um, doing the show that I love doing so much. My favorite things, and my banner just fell off camera. Banner just fell. Oh well. Yeah, sorry. I, I, so I, I want to give a shout out to the person who made that banner. Thank you so much for making the banner. We'll show it on face on Facebook page. Um, but I'm happy to be here for my two year anniversary and my 95th episode. I am working towards my 100 episodes, and that's coming up December 11th. I have a special guest for that episode. It's gonna be me. It's gonna be him. <laughs> if it's, it's not Morgan time. Freeman, I'm not watching it. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but anyway, I have a full, I have a panel full of former guests, men that I admire, who are here on my show today. I'm oh, going shit. to introduce them, but not give you all the information. I'm going to tell you what episodes they were on on my show. Oh. If you want to find out more about them, then look wow. those episodes. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how we're gonna do. That's how we're gonna Good do move. this. Good move. Good move. That's marketing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's called full circle okay. moments. If you're if you're an Oprah fan, so sitting next to me, he's actually sitting at the table this time. I am. He was here last year for my one year anniversary. I was. Um, and he's been he was in episodes the first episode. Ever. Bam. Bam. Wow. Okay. First one. Oh, the the pilot. Yeah. Oh, was, he was in the pilot. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> and he was also in episodes twenty three. Yep. And last year fifty eight. Last year, my mm -hmm. buddy Joshua Silverstein. Hey everybody! What's up? Uh, really gonna be here. And, and also my woman's episode. And she wasn't mentioned. She's been on here. She's yeah, on here I was too. Sitting on the couch when she was. Right yes, there. Like throwing things out there at us. Yeah, we're yeah. trying to ignore him, but just it, it wasn't. <laughs> and Miss Cynthia, we love her. Mm -hmm. uh, and now sitting across the table from me is another buddy of mine who was on episode seventeen. That was a long time ago. 17? 17. You were 17 that's, years old. That's not even like a good quarterback with the number 17. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. I like that. This funny. show's been on for 17 years. 17 years? Yeah, I started when I was two years old. Yeah. Um, one yeah. episode a year. Episode a year. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very patient audience. But they're too. big. They're big, fat episodes. <laughs> yeah. And he eats and drinks, and he looks like that. So it's just not fair at all. And he's no. Laura. Mm. That's not fair. As he drinks. As I drink. As he drinks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The young, young food, you love him, so he's good. <laughs> this guy, this guy was on just recently, my 90th episode. That's oh, wow. right. We had a good, we had a really good conversation. We did. And he's many things. You really watch episode 90 because we talk about all kinds of stuff on that episode. We got dirty. We, we, we did kind of. We, we did. We, we got we, grime. I had to go home and watch with a loofah. <laughs> <laughs> I was pink and in fetal position at the end of the night. I'm like, I can't believe I said that into a microphone. <laughs> oh my god. Ladies, Again. And, ladies and gentlemen, Tamara Katan. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> And on the couch, <laughs> not because they're bad people. Yeah, you put us on a couch, man. I was like, I was like, I like the couch. Best See, yeah. I, mean, I like the couch in principle. <laughs> <laughs> the one that just said he likes the couch, he has actually never been on this show. Oh no, I haven't. No, but you've been on my sister shows, like Absolutely. four or five, ten of them. And yes. That's why I brought him on because he's a really good buddy of mine, and you can watch him on the Bull Breakdown, Restless Wrap Up, my Spotlight On with your monogamy series. That's right. Uh, well, I know, maybe not his monogamy series, but his monogamy series. Mm -hmm. Watch the episode, you'll find out what that is. That's right. Brandon Larkins. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. thanks for having me. Chris shirt. A Chris shirt. Chris, 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 Chris shirt. Straight out the cleaners. And my <laughs> pitch hitter, and I know I can call him up because he does a lot of stuff like I do. No, it's because I have nothing going on and I'll well, just show the hell up. <laughs> there's, there's that too. But when he does show up, like on episodes 22, 54, and 62. Wow. Dang. 538, yes. 102. But what's funny, you were on episode 22. Like him was an early episode. Okay. 22. <laughs> like I said, I got nothing going on. I just showed the hell up. <laughs> Jeffrey Thorne. Hey, yeah. what's up, Jeffrey Thorne? Yeah. He draws for a living. You're very reliable. Yeah, I wish I drew for a living. <laughs> <laughs> he writes some things. Nah, right. It means he draws from his account. It's That's right. right. <laughs> you make, right. Yeah, you make withdrawals. <laughs> right. Withdrawals. Right. Withdrawals. Right. withdrawals. Yeah. Wait, is, pin, is Pinch Hitter a sports reference? <laughs> Oh, I, I thought you were saying he was a domestic abuser. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. He, he pinches, he pinches and he hits. hits. I'm like, we'll oh, just that, like we'll my dad. We'll talk about that later. Only <laughs> by request. <laughs> Only when there's consent. That's is right. he a Consensual domestic hug. abuser? Yeah. Consensual hug. You guys, so again, you follow us on iTunes, on SoundCloud, and on YouTube. Breaking Into is on Facebook. That's my page there. All the informations are on that page. 
And I just want to give a few thanks and stuff. So, oh my God, I'm starting already. Jesus Christ. Oh, get over no, I just know myself. Know myself. I know myself. <laughs> I told myself I'm I would never cry. do this to myself. Here we go. That's why, that's why I brought all men so they can make fun of me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, here's the thing. I just, I really do. I mean, in all seriousness, before I even give thanks and read for my goddamn cue cards, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for coming in because I really do appreciate. It. We're in this, we're in this industry where people are always trying to step on each other and backbite each other and uh, don't show up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And whenever I call you guys or text you guys or message you, you show up. Yeah, fam. Absolutely. You're a good Seriously. person. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. just till next year though, because then I'll right. have stuff to do. We're not. My yeah. career's not going that well. My <laughs> career's not going that well. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm, I'm almost famous. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's like get actual famous. <laughs> yeah. You got to talk to my people. Oh, okay. yeah, that's fine. You know, that's the whole thing. Yeah. But, uh, but I, just, I do. I, I just. I. I, think, I, I feel deeply because I've had a very hard year this year personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I just. So when people do show up, it really means a lot to me. And I want to show people out there. People are actually nice in this industry and actually support each other. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I've kept in touch with almost every single person that I've had on my show, so I want to tell you that it's, it is real. Yeah. That's and great. it's a testament to you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, so, man. We appreciate you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, I want to thank Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos, who I just saw today. I got to see them before my show uh, for starting this network and um, and just supporting my career and loving me. Phil Svitek, Daryl Christian, everyone at BHL, my girl in the booth, Mrs. Serafini. Mm. That's right, my girl. Mm. Booth lady. Booth lady. Yes, booth lady. She's the, the voice of the That's goddess. That's a whole show by itself. By itself, in exactly. Booth is made for walking. <laughs> Ron and Fish, Jeff Graham for all the scheduling and stuff. All the PR peeps that I've had to deal with, all the studios, all the stations. And of course, you guys, the fans and the followers who've just been so supportive of me. Now, everybody, bear with me for a second. I talk really fast, but I feel like every person who's been on my show deserves a shout out. So oh, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say, everybody just sit down Heck for a second. yeah. This is my show, and I'm going to say it. Well, that calls for a donut. Get a donut. Oh, watch out. Watch out. There you go. There you go. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go fast. I'm going to do my Scrabble turn real quick. While you the, do, you do your Scrabble turn. You're worth your friends. <laughs> I'm back. And all seriousness, I do, everybody who's been on my show, I'm, 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 I'm still in touch with, and I'm really glad. Peter Knights, S. Lee Savage, H. Warren Sharp, Ron Finley, Delilah Velo, Miko Branch, Melissa Johnny, Jalen Jones, Jerry Katzman, Dr. David Frey, Christy Ferris, Lem Gonzalez, R.J. Bond, Rial Andrews, Scott Trippin, Nazinga Stewart, Joel hernandez Kolsky, Donnell Turner, Rick Isquieta, Michael Douglas Carlin, Hector Hernandez, Michael Hyatt, Yannick Truesdale, Rob Armstrong, Tasha Witten Griggs, Adolfo Shabadu Quinones. What? Yes. <laughs> uh, Jeff, James Reynolds, Johnny Blaze, Mark Anthony Samuel, Justin Reed Early, Kimberly Zukowski, Heather Matthews. Moises Serrano, Cheryl Stabler, Loose Ends, the musical group. Jerry Morales. <laughs> they, 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 there's a whole bunch of them in there. I can't it's good, it's good. You know, Jane Eugene, I'll give her, she's the lead singer. I love her. <laughs> Jerry Morales, my cousin, Andre Dante. <laughs> Leticia Gabor, Jasmine Lewis, Rodney Salisbury, Jackie Long, Mickey Michaud, Terrell Ransom Jr., Louis Ariola, Robert G., Charles Wright, Tony Basil. What? Yep. Hmm. Carrie Rhodes, Patrice Lovely, Dr. Clarence Lee, James Moses Black. J.P. Cali Smooth, Delius Kennedy, Rachel Killian, Rabbi Mark Borowitz, Kirk and Joni Beauville, Alex Cipriano, Drexel Heard II, Cynthia Gillian, Woo! Jillian Reeves, the Ghost Brothers, Ryan L Lawrence, <laughs> Jason and Joshua Gabor, Allison Faust, Paul Lamar Hunter, Stan Pearson, Tensi Taylor, Edwina Finley Dickerson, the ladies at Wonderlux, Usman Ali, Latoya Tolbert Watson, Tommy the Clown, 202, the, Cla the cast series, Sean Murray, Devin DeVasquez, Kurt Fakwar, Malcolm David Kelly, Kivante Jackson, Melanie Mosley, Kristen Nia DeBarge, Chefs Gillian Jones and Elaine Smith, Mayumi McKinley, Tyler Rain, and my last guest was Michael Barley. Wow. Nice. Woo. Bravo. I've had some really good people on my show. I appreciate you. Shout yeah. out. I've had some really amazing people on my show. I gotta watch that Tommy the Clown episode. Oh, it's good. I didn't know you had him on. Oh, I had him on. He's he we we, we talked about some good history and stuff. And Funny how many people have three names. I always imagine yeah, that that's like in SAG they went they had their regular name and they're like oh shit I gotta use my middle name. <laughs> Somebody already has yeah. That. yeah. There was a Tommy B Clown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tommy the Clown. Yeah. And then there's a Tommy Duck Clown. Yeah. Yeah. They don't, they, we can't have them in the same Right, state. right. There's <laughs> also a dude whose last name was Areola. Yeah. Yes, Areola. That excited yeah. me very much. Yeah. <laughs> and did, it, did, it, did, it, did it excite your Areolas? <laughs> it did. Okay. It did. So, I'm a Libra and I like it in my nipple size. <laughs> oh, my God. Just kidding, you guys. All right. Just kidding. Okay, so here's the question, you guys. Oh, we were sent out to, um, to Barefoot Wines and Bubbly. 
for yeah, giving me some free chips. Yeah. Yay. Like drink. Barefoot. Barefoot. Thank you, thank you guys. Thanks yeah. for coming. And I'll give a shout out to uh, Martinelli's. Martinelli's. Oh, been around for a long best. time. It's been around for a long time. That's right. Let's drink like pregnant ladies. Exactly right. I turned out okay. So don't drink it all? I just said I turned out okay. My parents were drunk in the 60s. It was fine. Uh, okay, so I want to ask you, okay, so the first question is kind of actually, I talked about crying earlier. Mm. My first question actually is a fun one. Okay. Well, kind of fun. What pop culture moment, it could be sports, it could be a book, it could be a movie, it could be a TV show, a song, actually makes you cry? Oh, hmm. Bambi. Is that, I mean, that's, that's my movie. No. Like, oh, well, okay, there's two. Tell so, us. so uh, well, I like crying in movies. So that's just, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's no. dark. It's it's intimate. It's it's oh, you yeah. know like it, it's I think it's a very serene you know experience for me. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, uh, the scene where Bambi loses his mom. Oh yes. And it's, uh, it's, oh. it's a really and that's an amazing film. It's very honest and vulnerable. Yes. And I think it's a beautiful moment when he you know he he loses his mom. But also the Iron Giant. Which is an amazing oh, cartoon. I haven't seen but, that one. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, a, I, it, yeah. When, when he says, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Superman. When he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I sat, I sat in a dark theater by myself in the back, and I was like, "What is this?" And all of a sudden, exploded out of my face. But like really like intense man crying, yeah. so it was like, <laughs> you know, trying to mask it. Yeah. And every now, every whenever I see it, I just yeah. break down. Wow. Anybody else have one? Uh, I don't cry, man. You don't cry. Uh, you no. sure it's not one? It's like something that just gets to you. You see it? No. Um, I'm thinking. So let me go last. Okay. I'm so trying to go through the lexicon. Oh yeah, I got. It. I'm a crier, man. I'm not gonna lie. That's right. <laughs> B- bonafide actor producer over here. But hey, <laughs> you let a right scene have the right amount of music and scoring, <laughs> with like a heroic moment or someone passing away, because that music and that scoring has a a major fact. In factor in there, man. You know, I think about I Am Sam, with Sean Penn, when they were taking his daughter away and the courts. I was like, oh, man, I know I know that's not really you, Sean Penn, but <laughs> man, you playing a heck of a guy yeah. with a developmental disability right now, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know, moments like that. So, you know, that that and when, when, when the right scoring of the music comes in, man, they know how to really get me, man. And, and I, I don't fight it either. I'll be with my girl. I don't even fight it. Yeah. I understand with the music, but I understand that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys have any? Me, you know those uh, sweet and sour commercials? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where they go, first they're sweet, yeah. and then they're sour. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, this candy drinks too. <laughs> this candy's like my dad. Like this. <laughs> like my dad. No, I'm just playing. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> this candy's like my dad. The, the pursuit of happiness did it for Holy me. Holy crap. Oh. First they're oh, sweet. Man. Than themselves. Like, that's, totally, that's my childhood. No, but I think there's not, obviously, I joke around about it a lot because yeah. I didn't have a great relationship with my dad. Right, we talked about So for me, The Pursuit of Happiness was such a fucking amazing film. That's like the love I always wanted from a dad. And I, I, when I see that, like that, that's dope. Like, I just think that's so, uh, it was such a powerful film for me to see a man in a situation where they normally just, it's, it's almost a space that only women occupy. Mm-hmm. Like a deep, unconditional, I'll do anything for you kind of love, that's powerful. I don't think there's a lot of images of men doing that for their there sons. Isn't. There yeah, isn't. It's a there shame. Isn't. And yeah. also the sweet and sour commercial. It gets me <laughs> <laughs> it's your time. It's time. Eddie? Uh, always Yoda. Just for some, every time Yoda dies when I was a kid, man, that used to kill me. Right. But, uh, and, and later, it's for real, every time Yoda's like, I will go to sleep. He's yeah, a puppet. Like, oh, shit, Yoda, wake, Yoda, wake up. You know? No, Yoda, come on. Oh, my God. Uh, that one used to always get me. And uh, later on in life, movies like Pretty in Pink, because I always wanted to be Ducky. Oh, yeah. Not, not uh, pardon me, I didn't want to be Ducky. I was you Ducky. You were Ducky. I was wow. Ducky, and I'm like, why can't Ducky get the girl? You know? Uh, and I would watch, I was like, and then, of course, now you're getting older, and you're like, shit. How long did that movie come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I was a teenager. <laughs> so it, it so you, you feel like you're uh, con- getting connected as far as you're you're getting older, you know? Yes. You're like, shit, all right. Shawshank. Oh. oh. Get busy living or get busy dying. That worked me over. That mm. worked me over. That yeah. definitely worked me over. Wow. It's such a good movie. Oh, and the That's old good. man hangs himself, man. The bird guy. The whole, that, whole, oh. that whole riff, that whole circle in that middle of the movie about that, when you didn't, that's when you find out what the movie's actually about that little conversation and then everything after that is all right now yeah and i was just like when uh when they had that little conversation you see one man who's like i agree i'm broken 
And the other one's like, well, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, yes, you had me at hello. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that's, that's a good yeah. one. I, I, and you're right about that movie. It's, that, from that point on, it's about, yeah, that's, that's good. There's also a movie online that's Middle Eastern. So a lot of people in America wouldn't know about it. It's called Lawrence of Alabia. It's a little <laughs> pornographic. Uh, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a real tear jerk for you. Wow. That's a real tear jerk for you. They, they set that up before they came in here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they I think so. I think so. They banned the loose ends It's a movie that always makes you pull out tissues. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I mean, but for real, like, porn is like, if you watch it, it can go what? deep. It can get. It can get real deep. It can get deep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Not really that deep. I mean, well, it depends hey, on the star. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, you look past the symbol. Uh, more than a foot. Have you not seen pirates? Come on. Pirates. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, back to you. What I make. What makes me cry. This is what I have. Three things that always make me cry. One, the hurt song by Johnny Cash. Mm. It's a remake of a so Nine Inch intense. Nails song, but yeah. it's, he died a few months later. Did you see the video? The video, video oh. makes me cry. It's like it's the end intense. of intense, and the lyrics are so meant for him. Yeah, but it's Trent Reznor. I mean, it's, it's just it just makes me cry when I hear it. It's mm. a very sad song, but very poignant song. And of course, for some of you younger people out there, you may know this. And I cry every single time. The Fresh Prince. When when Ben Vereen, who plays wow. his dad, oh, it's, walks yeah. out on him again, yeah, and so and Will is with 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 the wonderful oh. rest in peace James Avery, who played Uncle Phil. That was such an amazing, amazing scene. scene. Though. I love my father, and, and I had a bad with my father too. So oh, I mean, I know the whole man, thing of father coming and going. Oh, I remember that. And but the scene that gets me to cry is when he says, when he turns around and finally says, "Why doesn't my dad want me?" Yeah, and Uncle Phil just. I don't know if it was part of the script or anything. No, he, he just, just held him. him and takes the hat off. Takes the hat off and yeah. yeah. holds him. Yeah. And I thought for myself, it was all crazy. Of us, all of us boys who didn't have a father like that or an uncle like that, I wish I was that. That's uncle it. Bill. Isn't it interesting that Pursuit of Happiness, like when I think of like people who create these moments between fathers and sons, Will Smith comes up so often. He does. Wait, Will so Smith often. had a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> He's a rapper once? It was a very long music video. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, it's for it's several it is fun watching the early episodes when he's mouthing everybody else's lines. It's the funniest thing ever. You watch the what? Room. He and knew and everybody's lines. So now you, I gotta go watch. You watch yeah, him and he's, he's mouthing everybody's it. lines. It's, the yes. fun, it's great. And they changed on Vivs. One was light skin. One was Don't dark. get me started <laughs> yeah. on Vivs. That's not a story. But uh, the last thing that makes me cry is on Dallas, the reboot of Dallas. Larry Hagman died. Interesting. In the, reboot was, oh, the reboot of Dallas. The reboot of Dallas. The reboot of Dallas. The reboot of Dallas. And Jr. And, and, and Jr. dies, but Larry Hagman died in real life. And him and Patrick Duffy were friends in real life. who played Bobby, his brother. So there's this long, there's a 35 year history. From the opening scene, they slowed down the Dallas music. They had Hillary Hackman's silhouette in the background. You're already crying already. But there's a scene at the very end where he's reading a letter from JR, and he grabs a drink of JR's whiskey, and he literally is crying in his drink. The whole episode, he keeps it together. But at the very end, he finally he sits down, and he's taking a drink, and he's crying in his drink. And I don't know if that was the acting choice or whatever, but that makes me just, that's so, and I went through that recently myself. So I mean, I feel like that was such a realistic scene. Like you're saying goodbye to his friend and the actor. And the, I mean, and the, and and the brother. character and his brother. It's like right. it's just, and that scene makes you cry. It's a really well done scene. It was loaded. It was loaded. <laughs> yeah. It was loaded. But I'll be, you see all those scenes for me are all about family stuff. And yeah. life. Mm-hmm. Those, yeah. those make me cry more than. And anniversaries, apparently, you cried. Every anniversaries. Anniversary. Mm-hmm. I, got, I got one more. I got one more. Talk, talk, please. Uh, uh, and it was all because of the moment that it happened. So I, I and it's, it's my sound cliche and a little like hokey, but the um, the same love song by Malcolm Moore, when I first heard on the radio, I bawled. And not because the song is, is, it's a beautiful song, but I was like, oh wow, this is on the radio. Like mm-hmm. this is a song about same sex relationships on a radio, yes. on a hip hop station. Yes. And I was like, whoa. Right. And that made me think, oh wow, there's hope. These are changing. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I just wept. That's that like, was... uh, yeah, like uh, the Hamilton, Hamilton soundtrack. Yes. Uh, I wrote my way out. Oh, that man. destroys me. Yeah. Like I can't even listen to the whole thing straight through. Yeah. I, I, I saw the musical and I, I here in LA and I I cried half through half. But I love. I haven't seen it. Yeah. It's so it's it. so it's amazing yeah. in the fact that it's hip hop. That the music it's, it's, it's not then I guess on Broadway it's like it's this hip hop yeah. backdrop. But he yeah. said he wrote it because when he was growing up. Well, he didn't write it because when he was growing up, but the way that it's structured musically, that he was like when my mom was playing all these um, uh, the vinyl soundtracks of every musical, right? That that was how he was exposed to musical theater. So he had in mind when he made this, you don't need to see it. You can listen to it in your car. Like, it's designed to mm-hmm. be listened to elsewhere. You can, you can, you can. And it's 
you can like yeah. you should check my uh, playlist. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yeah, like that that bunches of that musical, but that one song. Well, it's funny how a song can kind of change based on on an experience. So growing up as a little kid, I was a huge Prince fan. My my brother and I would buy well my brother because he was older he would buy every Prince record when it came out. We'd play it, read the lyrics, cover to cover, all those lyrics. I yeah, was like, so oh, I know, I know. Right? There was some, yeah, and like after he died, when I the the first time I heard sometimes it snows in April, oh. it killed. I can't hear that song. I love it. It's it's like a because yeah. I'm a, I know I'm gonna I'll start and I'm like no. Nah. Yeah. Every time, every time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I wonder—is it because Prince died? Is it because of the connection to the family that I have to that song? And now he died, so is that dying in your life? You Isn't know what that, I mean? Is that I mean, part of your life now dead? Before yeah. we started, yeah. you were like you grew up in a musical family. Mm-hmm. Uh, those things is designed. Music is a is one universal, right? Like yeah. you don't have to know the language and you could still be wrecked by something, not even speaking oh. the language. So of course it's going to attach, right? Of course those things that are by themselves already beautiful will attach to a moment and then destroy you at 40. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to yes. get you later. Yeah. 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 You think little, you like me now. Seeds <laughs> yeah. that are planted. Yeah. Yeah. That mm-hmm. before I watched the George Michael documentary that's out on HBO. It's really good. It was his last thing he worked on before he died. Uh-huh. And he narrates it. I, for, I cried. I forgot how much his music... I saw him in concert back in 85 for the oh, Wham wow. America tour. Damn, dude. And then I saw him 25 years later. So I've seen him in two different parts of his life. For Prince. Um, for, I saw Prince five times. Me too. I, I, well, I, I love Prince. And me too. Oh, at the yeah. four. At the four. <laughs> at the four. Um, but with George Michael was funny because they had they had some scenes where they had famous people like Elton John and Liam Gallagher and um, people listening to his songs on vinyl, mm-hmm. and it was and there was no dialogue, and you could see them processing the song now that he's dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like, and it made me cry. It made me, I got teary. I was like, oh my god, I'm like. Praying for time, Jesus to a child, even songs like Freedom and I yeah. mean and Faith and, I mean, and, and Hand to Mouth and I Want Your Set. But they were all like these beautiful songs yeah. he did. Mm-hmm. You know what I think is powerful about music? And I didn't think about this till I went to Afghanistan to perform for the troops. I was about to get on a Black Hawk helicopter for the first time, and I've never even been on roller coasters because we didn't have like Disneyland money when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what a roller coaster was. Wow. <laughs> so now I'm an adult man in Afghanistan and I'm talking to this guy, they called him our point of contact, our POC. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to put on this album that I really like. And he's all, oh, don't do that. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's all, don't listen to music that you love in a Blackhawk because if something goes wrong, it'll ruin the album for you. And so it made me just go, wow, it's almost like music's right here, this cog, right? And then our emotions are right here, this wheel. And every once in a while, they click in together. I'm totally stealing that. Right? You can. You I'm going to write wow. that in That's, That's an awesome. Cl- and I think it's that combination of things. It's like music is out there floating for us like colors on a palette. And then based on what we're feeling, we notice a color. It's selective attention, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and, they, mm-hmm. and I think that's why music heals so many people, because it hits you emotionally. It's the only place. Well, you don't need to speak a language. Yeah. You, you don't. You really don't. Because yeah. like, it, it's, it's a uh, feeling. Gabriella and uh, uh, what is it? What's the, other, what's the guy's name? Because she's the shit. They're both guitarists, mm. uh, Spanish yeah, language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine turned me on to them. I can't get enough. Rodrigo, Rodrigo and, Gab- and Gabriella. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's all about Gabriella. Holy crap! Like she came from the Guitar Planet. Like, oh my God, he's amazing. You know, but it's weird, right? Like it's almost like it's a distilled memory. Mm-hmm. Like it attaches to something. That's it. And then every time you hear that track, especially yeah. if it's, it's like, like Pavlov's a, dog. Yeah, like a live track, yeah. but fast. Yeah, like fast, like yeah. click, and then it's always there. That's kind of pure. I, like, I totally but, agree. Yeah. I think the Pavlov's dog is almost like a black and white version of this us living in HD. Yeah. Right. Like oh, you can make a dog hear a bell and crave food, but it's like yeah, but you can make people crave a whole lot of things with different kinds of sounds. It doesn't mm-hmm. just have to be. But I wonder more if it's complex. about like filling in the blank. You know, like I wonder if there's a thing about music where it's like you have to have a void somewhere in your experience where this thing fills it in and that's what makes you sure. like a missing piece like and then that's like, the like, last that's the thing yeah. you know like if, if you are for lack of a better word a whole person and have have no trauma and have no uh, <coughs> no fragments I don't know what that is I know yeah, what is that <laughs> that's, not that's not a whole that's not a whole person that's not real words <laughs> so I'm like what is that yeah like what is, no pain what is a that whole yeah. Yeah. like, cool like, like let's say if you're white and privileged do you feel what? like do you feel like white people are privileged do you think Trump cries do you feel like Trump <laughs> has music like oh well, he doesn't cut onions so right I'm sure he doesn't oh, do cry. you feel like what is Trump's what is Trump's like 
That's the song that every whenever oh, I hear it, man. whenever I hear Dolly Parton, I'm like, bam! Like, what is it for him? It's probably the soundtrack to The Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking something Vig Wagnerian, something, something, right? like, yeah. something Hitlerish. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Wagner. Yeah. How, you know, how does music hit you? It's always talking about music. Uh, How's it? Man, music for me, it 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 it, it resonates something inside. I had, before I even started with the acting and producing, I started off as a songwriter, yep. man. Oh wow! Okay. And I even started at the age of maybe like four or five, man. I was listening to a song by Paul Stanley, uh, of Kiss, <laughs> mm -hmm. front man of Kiss, and I was like, "This is what I want to do in my life." So it was write. Kiss. I want to write. Yeah, for me, for me, it was Paul Stanley and Kiss. It was Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Yes. No gay. Uh, yeah. It was Devonte Swain from Jodeci. All those guys influenced me. I was that kid that. Not only did I want to get the album or the tape or the CD, I need to open up and look at all of the credits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the latter. Where yeah. it's who wrote it, who co-wrote it, who produced it. So that's how music really influenced me. You know, I know many people know me as an actor, as a producer, but it was music, man. That I don't know. Anytime you can hear certain lyrics or certain music, and you just start breaking down on the inside, man. You know that that yeah, that's, that's pretty powerful emotion. Yeah. The thing I admire yeah. about it too yeah. is that any musicians from anywhere in the world. You can sit them down. They don't speak your language. They pull out their instrument, and the other one's like, -da 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 -da, and all of a sudden they're off to the, off to the races. You know, what's, off to the ra you yeah. know what's weird too is the one time as men we're allowed to be emotional. Yeah, like I even yes. say, like in my comedy, I always say women grow up with impossible physical standards, but men grow up with impossible emotional ones. Yes. All my life, I've been told boys don't cry. If a boy doesn't cry, it means a man that doesn't feel. It's impossible. Yes. But like, you could be the baddest, toughest dude ever, but you can rap or sing about a girl who ripped your heart out. That's right. And everybody's cool with you. Oh, dude, yeah. it's Everybody. fun. That's true. You're right about that. I just know for me, because I, I am, I guess, the parent of the group. Um, <laughs> How I, dare you? I, I guess. I mean, I just grandparent. Just, <laughs> and grandparent of the group. <laughs> grandparent of the group. That's right. Shout out to Ryan and Scott and Zayden. Um, but when when I, ha I have daughters, <laughs> they forced me. To become emotional, sure. Mm -hmm. Like they, I mean, I, I watched their mothers, of course, be naturally emotional. But for me, I had to kind of learn it because I was told the whole thing: you yeah. don't, you guys don't cry, you don't do this, you fix things, yeah. you just fix it. I was taught by them to listen more. It was like listen; they want they they want you to listen to them. Yeah. Girls want you to listen to them. They don't want you to fix everything all the time. Yeah. That's what I learned at a very young adult age dealing with them. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter's the same way. I just want you to hear me, not just fix it for me and change it and tell me, don't worry about that, I'll take care of it. No, they want to hear, you want you, they want you to listen to their emotions. Yeah. And guys aren't just like made that way at first. We have to learn that. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that's the way, it's, it, it's, an exp it, it's probably a, an outcome of the way society makes them feel unheard. You know, and so of course they want the people that love them the most to, to hear them. You know, it totally makes sense. It's almost like you, when you have daughters with a woman, it's like you have a kid that's learning a language that you don't speak. So you better learn it. Yes. Or your wife and them are going to start speaking yes. German. <laughs> that's, that's a good analogy. And take that's over. A, we can't let them take over. <laughs> <laughs> take over. That's a great analogy. Because they, they are speaking a kind of different. They are speaking yeah, a different language. No. Yeah. They to are. remind them we're stronger in the upper body. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, know, I know some chicks are stronger than yeah, I am. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not that's a rule. True. That's yeah, more like true. a guideline. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> but uh, this, leads, this, leads to a, this leads to a question I want to ask because this, this is, you know, it's a, I'm going to ask this question. You folks at home, I'm sure it's will bring up a lot of stuff for people. I don't really care. I'll bring the dialogue. But are men being attacked fair, unfairly these days? Or is it, or <laughs> what? Is it long overdue? Oh man! I, I mean, that's the question. All right, look, for guys, I want to hear what you guys the, the hard part about the hard part about that kind of a conversation is it requires nuance, and most people don't want to let you have nuance. Right. Mm -hmm. Not all women are right. Not all women tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Some women are predators. Some women work dudes over, just yes. like guys. Well, not exactly like guys because we do have a physical component that generally women don't. Okay. So there's that half. We're not allowed to mention that when discussing this issue. Yes. On the same side, the phrase, not all, can't be used, mm -hmm. right? Not all cops, not all black people, not all white mm -hmm. people, not all whatever. Most. So you, right? <laughs> yeah, but right. what the attack is about is when I get mad at cops, because I have cops in my family, I have friends that have been cops over the course of my life, but when I'm talking about cops, they're included. Right. And here's why, because they stand next to the bad guy. And they don't say, you're a bad guy, I'm going to turn right. my back on you. Right? They, they, they opt for the uniform. Rather, they rap for the team jersey rather than for mm -hmm. what's good. So, yeah, I think it's about time women started smacking us as a group. Yeah. Because guys who don't do that shit, let me put it like this. I've been in, I've been in the performing arts since I was, f I've been in the arts since I was 14. 
I defy anyone, anyone, even a person who hates my guts, <laughs> to find a single moment where any woman could say Jeff harassed me or was in any mm-hmm. way other than polite to me or did anything untoward, right? Impossible, literally impossible. And guys who I'm not friends with anymore know they probably not ought to behave that way in my presence. It's very early, easy in a relationship between dudes. <clears throat> oh, this dude's not one of us. Yeah. He's not going to be, uh, okay, cool. We can only invite him to these parties. Right. These other parties, <laughs> yes, right. he's he not going to be quiet. Put limitations right. on him. Right. Yes, right. And yes. so you're, you're, you are your brother's keeper. So insofar as you are not your brother's keeper, that's on you too. Even if you didn't do anything, if you just walked by, if you just shined it on. And we live in a time where, ma- wow, I'm on a freaking rant. Um, I love it. That's why I brought you here. We're in a time of where everyone's got a camera. Everyone's always looking mm-hmm. at everybody. Everyone's recording everything, even if you don't think you're being recorded. We just talked about the lady who flipped off uh, Mr. Trump. Yeah. This is before we started. Okay. And she got fired yeah. the next day because some random person had a camera and took a picture of it and posted it on their wow. social media. Yeah, that's the downside. That's the backlash part. That's the world we live in. But yeah. the upside <laughs> is a lot of people who hadn't had voices before who could not say, you know what, fuck you. Yeah. And I'm sorry I'm swearing because I write cartoons right now for a living, but it is very much a... You, you it, write South Park. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. Uh, uh, it, is, it is very much a, a deserved and long overdue fuck you, a collective fuck you. All those women marching after, uh, after the election, if I, was a, if I was that dude and every woman or even... 75% of the women on the planet came out in March to say, fuck you, I would never leave my house again, <laughs> right? right? You know, I mean, someone's got to push it. Someone's got to push over that line. Someone's got to take those first hits. Someone's got to do all of that. And now they're safer to do it as a group because they don't all have to be in the same company. They don't have to be in the same streets together. They can say, look, collectively, dudes, you need to look at your shit. You really need to look at your shit. And those that don't want to identify themselves instantly by saying, I don't want to do that. Right. Well, we're going, it's a, it's a time of change, right? Like, there's this great Chinese quote that says, may you live in interesting times. And they, yeah. Right? And we live in interesting <laughs> yes. times. Yeah. It's like, I used mm-hmm. to always joke around that, like, we've got new software to download now. We have to change the way we treat, we did a new, we got to update our operating system. Some of us are iPhones and we can do it. Some of us are flip phones and we can't. I'm going right. to keep playing Snake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my God. Keep being no. a snake. You want to yeah. yeah. you keep being a snake. Right. But we're going to move on without you. That's You're right. going to be the wisdom teeth of, yeah. of society. Oh, I love that. That's oh, great. I love that too. Oh, it's, oh my God. it's true. And you yes. will be pulled. Absolutely. You know, yes. And this is in I every like war, when there's a, when we decide to go to war for, for a change, for to, to get past an argument that we can't get past, there is some collapse damage in order to get to our goal. I hate that language because normally it's meant people that look like me are killed. Right. right. But that is what part of war is with collateral damage. And I think that, yeah, there are some good guys, but at this point, if you speak up and say, oh, there's some good guys, you're distracting from where we should have our attention focused, well, which is the fact that there are bad guys. But I do think there's a point where you can't just say to p- people, somebody made a mistake. There's got to be, we, it's almost like when you first invented fire, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of arson on accident. Right? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> we, <laughs> the internet is still new. Yeah, right. still that's new. true. We're making lots You're of right. cultural You're mistakes, right? right. We're right. still that's figuring true. it out. Yeah. And I do think not every guy is just evil. Like, that. Right. that's not the way. I think some people are uneducated. I think we all grew up with a TV show like Happy Days yeah. where the mm-hmm. dude we love snapped at women and they showed up and he kissed them. The next day he was on to the next. Yeah. That that behavior today would be considered harassment, but that was mm-hmm. that was in our soup. Yep. Those are ingredients that are in soup, so you can't yeah. tell us now, ooh, you got MSG. You put it there. Right, yeah. right, right. Exactly. Give me a chance to get it out. It's yeah. empathy too, right? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about we we're just talking about music before. I think empathy is learned. I think people assume mm-hmm. children are innocent, blah blah blah. But children are also innocent in terms of vicious, dangerous behavior. Mm-hmm. They're mm-hmm. they're innocent because they lack data, not because they're pure. So you'll see evil kids do evil, horrible. Oh, yeah. Everyone has mm. seen a five-year-old try to murder another yeah. five-year-old, yes. and they're not playing. They're trying to <laughs> murder that kid. Yeah. But empathy must be retaught sometimes. You Amen. have to be able to see yourself in the other person. Yeah. Right. You, if, if that's the only way you can learn it, anyway, it, you have to be able to picture yourself there. Hundred percent. If you can't, you're gonna hurt people. I think also what's what's cool about now is that like I, I, I've always felt that 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 sexism is in our DNA. Right, like what you were saying, like it's in our, it's in our, it's in our origins as humanity. Yes. You know, where where when when babies are born, there's been studies where if it's a girl, uh, you let her hold your finger. If it's a boy, you pull to see how strong the little boy is. <laughs> wow. And so we, from the jump, are like girls are weak, boys are strong. Mm-hmm. 
And so there are people that exist today who are on the front lines who don't even know that they are participating in a very sexist environment. So we're changing the, the, the language and the lexicon and the culture to say, hey, this isn't okay. And, and although right now we're doing the whole broad strokes thing, which is like all men on the bus, that's cool. You know, uh, we've been riding the bus for a very, very long time. Yeah, yeah. And, and women are the stronger sex, though. It's like women are, if we had to carry around nine pound babies, oh, yeah. all those commercials for Viagra would be birth control commercials. <laughs> but even but that, no joke, no like, joke. Like, seriously, they are the strong. We are, you know, we Gladiator are, quote, would have had a pregnant. Prettier, uh, I don't want to say prettier sex, it's not the prettier sex, but we. We are the peacocks, so to speak. Yeah. We, oh, hey, we, yeah, 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 we stay a certain <laughs> look for a certain age, and it's a, just in the wild. You know, which has the prettiest feathers gets but the even, girl, which is blah, blah, blah. Even our, define, even our definition of what women is is so skewed. Like, mm -hmm. they're women who don't produce babies, and we take away their women card. You're right. And it's like we, we literally are so bass backwards on what a woman is allowed to do. I saw it, the it, handmaiden. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. And so, and so, so it's, you know, so, so yeah, a couple of men who are of power are getting knocked down. That's, that's the, that's like a chip at the chip yeah. that needs right. to crumble. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, it's also us taking yeah. the steering wheel away from governments that are telling, because they're not just t telling women what they are and are not, they're also telling us what we are yeah. and are not. Like women, oh, you gotta look perfect, so then they become bulimic and anorexic. And men, we're emotionally bulimic. Right. We're emotionally anorexic, because we're not allowed to express ourselves. I, hopefully it'll be a time where we can say, fuck the government and fuck people that are trying to tell us how we can and cannot behave. Yeah. We, sh we should be able to define that ourselves and make our own story. An interesting thing that just happened in my feed, and I've been noticing pe my Twitter feed, which of course I live on. Um, That's why I brought him in, because some of you guys are actually, you're on, you're, you guys are very uh, vocal on your feed. You know what? Life is short. Life is short. Life is short. Life is really, really, uh, yes. really, really yes. short. And some of these things, it seems petty in the moment, but some things you shouldn't just let go. Uh, some dude, I don't know who he was, I think he turned out to be some VP at NBC or something, which probably hurts my career for <laughs> doing something, and you know what, too freaking bad. Yeah. But he pulls out this little girl from the um, uh, Stranger Things show that's on, uh, and he says, oh, she's growing up in front Millie of us. And all Bobby this, Brown. Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. Right? What a name. This little girl is 13 years old. She is literally a girl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they got her in this high couture stuff, sashaying down the runways on these interview things. Now, maybe her parents are cool with it. Maybe she's that one precocious kid who thinks she's 30 and really fits that way. There are kids like that. <laughs> I was one of them. Yeah. I didn't some some wear kids the have couture. an old soul, man. Right. Yeah. I didn't wear yeah. the couture yeah. and all that. But it isn't about what she chooses to do. It's about how she's observed and commented on. Right. And what you have is a bunch of guys, or so far anyway, a bunch of guys going, oh, man, look at her. That's what the vibe is. It's not, yeah, it's look creepy. at this darling girl. She's going to be a woman one day. It's, mm. Mm -hmm. It's that, you I know that. I started Wait watching too. Stranger Things 2 yesterday. Doesn't she look like a miniature version of the lady from Big? <laughs> yeah. That's makes so funny. I can say that. that. Okay. She, right? But okay. this is the thing. Like, anyway, sorry. This, I was like, well, damn, so I can't think of This conversation, <laughs> you can't have a conversation, you can't have a hard conversation without having hard words. Yeah. You can't have a hard, you can't have hard concepts without taking some hits. Yeah. Just as we talk about, we're all men of color in this room, mm -hmm. we can talk about white privilege and then my white in-law, I, I have many white in-laws, mm -hmm. uh, may say, well, wait, that's not me you're talking about. I am also right. white. Yeah. Like, look, obviously, that's the, that's the next, obviously no one's talking about you. Right. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, mm -hmm. I as a male enjoy certain privileges. Whether I like to or not, whether I use them or not, when I can walk down the street any time of day or night, I weigh just about 300 pounds, and anyone who steps to me needs to bring a lunch. Right. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. so but To hang out with you and have a picnic? Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> I, didn't know, I, didn't, I just didn't know where you were going. Ladies, secretly, <laughs> yeah. secretly yeah. what we do when we meet up yeah. is <laughs> we're all prepared for we the breakout picnics. picnics. <laughs> that, that's what he meant right. by his feed. That's right. what I wanted to be clear. I just want to be in the same table. You know, and we all know. That's good. And it was weird because it didn't happen to me until I was an adult and I really started thinking about it. And it I had to have empathy. When I was in LA as a teenager, I had to have the third eye out for cops. Yes. Gangsters mm -hmm. and cops, yeah. equally. Right. Equally, equally. Okay. okay. Right. Right. Anyone yes. who grew up in that period of time I knows did. what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's chick's life daily. That's mm -hmm. from the time, sometimes right. before puberty, but definitely after puberty. She steps out of that house and it's like, what's this dude up to? Yeah. Right. Every dude, mm -hmm. yeah. all no the right, time. No right, right. Mm -hmm. Cute, not cute, doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Right? That's right. That's a worldview that we have to consciously try to grasp. You can't just kind of get it. We have a privilege. Let's acknowledge it and see what we can do about how it... I'm glad yeah. you brought up the race thing, because that's why I, I kind of want to go to that a little bit, too, because we're all, all men of color. 
And some of us are actually multicultural I'm sitting up here. I know, you're a man of color too. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, I know. I know. And, <laughs> no, but, but, but for me, growing, growing up, because I have white, I had a white grandfather and white cousins, and my father's half white, and, and then black and Puerto Rican, I have everything in my family. It was funny for me, because I, I was until I was an adult when people would say to me, I don't think of you as black. And I thought that was, a, I thought that was a term of endearment at first. When, uh, I was, when I was 18, 19 years old, I really thought, I was like, oh, they see me as James. No, 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 that's no. the N-word. That's yeah. the Right. Yeah. It's like, I, thought, I thought, you see me as James Lott Jr., you don't see me as black. And then it hit me at around 21, 22. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> hey. What does that mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, I am black, so right. you, see, you see what I look right. like, kind of. So I'm like... So do you mean you don't see me as a person who's bad in your eyes because you think black is bad? I guess I really start to look at that a little differently. Sure. You know, like, it's like you don't need to follow me around the convenience store. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's right. what the, sub the subtitles are like. Right. Hey, weird. I'm not scared. Right. That's right. the subtitle. Yeah. Right. So right. That's because the, yeah. the, they got a definition of what it means to be black that's this no. narrow and that yes. tainted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, that's what I love about the arts. I think like the arts is sort of a self healing organism, like Wolverine, right? Like when bad things happen. The movie, like before 9 11, the number of superhero films we had, you could count on two hands. That's mm -hmm. true. After 9 11, it went up to like 80, 90, 100, because that's what society was thirsty for. A hero, like Godzilla was created after we dropped bombs on Japan. Yeah, that's so they created a radioactive monster to fight the West, right? And it was this symbol. And I think what's going to happen in society is now women starting to speak up and empathy. When was the last time we had a movie where the hero did right by empathy? Right? We solve all our problems in all our films with aggression. Yeah. It's no wonder that the people in society, like, we're watching that shit all the time. So hopefully we'll start to self heal and we'll start to make films that are more reflective of the evolution we're making. The producers listening. Right? Because he's like, he, 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 monogamy. We were talking about yeah. when you had to show show monogamy. There's some sense. really great stuff it on there sense. about that yeah. with men and women. Yeah. You talk about relationships from that show. We, 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 we do. You broke it down. Yeah, we are at, at, a, at a point right now. We're lost. I, I'm going to say, I, I think a lot of us are lost, you know, and there's so much going on. You got the, you know, you got the politics things going on. You know, we got the mass shootings going on right yeah, now. Yeah. We got, you know, a lot of these high Hollywood execs guys being exposed right now. There's a lot going on right now, man. And, you know, sometimes we just need to just take a chill pill and just shut up sometimes, man. Amen. And just start to, like, observe. And you know, I was talking to one of my buddies and I said, man, you got to be careful now. You have to be aware of your surroundings, mm -hmm. who you're befriending, who you're interacting with. You just never know certain individuals' motives. Like, you have no idea what the next guy or the next girl's intentions are, though. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's James Latcher. He's celebrating his two-year anniversary. I'm going to see if I can get in his good graces right now. I'm going really, <laughs> to really try to hurt him a little later on, but I'm up front like I'm his friend right now. Though. Why? Because he's James Lott Jr. and he's celebrating his two-year anniversary, and how can I come up that way? Yep, mm -hmm. that's so true. But that's you true. don't know that in right. the beginning, in, right. in, during, during the initial meetings and things like that, man. Right. You know, that's right. so you know, here in 2017, we just have a lot going on. It's yeah. it's just a lot going it's on. It's overwhelming, it, right? And you know, that's a great word. It's it's very overwhelming because you never know what's going to happen next. That's right. You know, we take back. You, you look at the uh, the 53 or the 50 plus that got killed, unfortunately, in in Las Vegas. Yep. And you know, someone said on the news. You would have never thought that would have happened at a country concert. Unbelievable. But if it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, if but it was, it was a hip hop yeah, concert, no, no. I can yeah. understand. Well, you know, or, we or, you know, right or, or, <laughs> or if it was Ozfest in the 90s, I well, can understand yeah, that. that. Say, yeah. But not yeah. a country concert. Yeah. yeah. And that's them basically <laughs> announcing publicly that they have faulty empathy. Uh huh. Yeah. That's there you an go. announcement. That's a proclamation to say, I'm broken. But it's fear mm -hmm. of the unknown, right? You know, but that's where I want to thank. I want to thank Facebook because it's given me a bullshit filter where before I would have spent 10 years, like, in invested in a relationship with somebody and now within like three months I'm like this motherfucker's crazy <laughs> 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 right. do bullshit. thank you Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. you messed up my Facebook page my personal you know, it's, it's all good you make my life a little bit easier it's, all, it's like the dude that told Trim me Santa fat, Claus wasn't real, real. <laughs> also, like the, the dude who said Santa Claus wasn't real in elementary school got a promotion and he, you know, yeah, yeah, now yeah. we're finding out everything is mm -hmm. fake yes. I, I think to your point though too though is that I think we're all because of Facebook and because of social media we're all very self-absorbed in our own little bubbles. Yeah. And I think when that That's country right. thing happened, it was like, oh, there's more going on than what, I uh -huh. than what I'm aware of. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I think what's happening <laughs> too is people are beginning to trickle outside of their comfort zone and go, oh, there's a greater reality. But yeah. the, problem, the problem, and it's, it's a real problem, is that there's a shitload of Americans. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of us. Uh, we have a gigantic country. 
when you when, every time they talk about gun control and they point to all the other countries, it's, in the it's West, too soon. It's too soon to talk about gun control. So. <laughs> right, it's always too soon. <laughs> always too soon. Uh, you, you heard that eight thousand uh, times. After it's yeah. too soon. It's too soon. Yeah. But whenever they talk about Britain or France or whatever, yeah. they're talking about countries that are the size of one of our states yeah, on the exactly. east coast. Mm -hmm. They're not even That's the size right. of our big western states. Like Montana could eat half of Europe. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, our culture's been described by white supremacy, whether they want to name it that or not. Everyone who's not basically Germanic, uh, Celtic descent over here has a minor to major issue to step over mm -hmm. for life, mm -hmm. okay, for 300 years, right? okay? And now because of technology, I think, I think it's just the advent of interconnectivity between all of us where we can instantly get at each other, instantly see all of this shit, right? Mm -hmm. People are going, what you're saying, they're overwhelmed. They're like, here's all this information, here's all this stuff that no one's saying, but it's challenging these deep beliefs mm -hmm. that I have that I've never even questioned. People who literally think you can be born a Muslim, born a Christian, yeah. you have to learn these things. But their fundamental value system doesn't include that. And so reality around them is like, look, gay people, look, bi people, well, look, yeah. transsexual yeah. people. Yeah. Holy crap, they're real and they're not evil. Yeah. But if they're not evil, what does that mean about my mindset? What does that right. mean about all of these things? I don't want to challenge that. I'd rather just shoot them. Right. <laughs> well, it's right. like the, the, the bubble's cracking and the water's rushing in. Right. And it's rushing in at such a pace. So like, I don't have time to adapt yet. Like, give me, give me, uh, give me, give me like some, that. Give me some yeah. time. I don't have any time. I like I don't that. Yeah. Out. Time. Right. And it's like, you got to yeah. do it now. Yeah. Because they're right. They're your neighbors. Yeah. They're on your front lawn. Make they're a decision. Right. They're Make making decision. your TV show. Yeah. They're here. That, that that character, he's gay now. Oh. Like, but I love this character. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, well, wait a minute. The, then, if Fonzie's gay, then how, what do I adapt to? Yeah. What's what does that mean about me? Yeah, exactly. I might be gay. What, what will yeah. happen? Yeah. 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 You know, right. so it's, right. I think the churches are trying to figure out how to make money now. Because, yeah. Like, right. shit, we got this book that says you can't be like that. But man, I got to make some money off these people. Right. Uh, you know, we, we put some priests out there so they couldn't have kids. We can keep all their property. And it's all happening at once. You know, religious. It's gender. It's, it's, it's political. Wild. You know, it's sports. It's I mean, money. It's, it's sports. Yeah, right. Like I was, just, I was, I was joke. I was half joking the other day. But all these people who are mad because they are taking their jobs away, the various non-specified yeah, immigrant people <laughs> yeah, that yeah. are taking their yeah. jobs. The Baby, it's AI and robots. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a smart car. Watch. You're gonna have a smart truck. And yeah. once you have smart trucks, you don't have any need for truckers. Nope. Right. They don't need to sleep. They stop for gas right. at an automated gas station, especially for them. Probably not even gas, probably be electric or solar mm -hmm. because they can just keep rolling, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's like a wave of people out of work almost instantly. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's and a wave happening. of other people mm -hmm. who work at the diners and the people who support those guys, little mm -hmm. hotels and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That's all gone too. That's thousands to millions of yeah. people yeah. suddenly obsolete. That's you think they're gonna be happy? Of course not. See, no. that's they got to point fingers at somebody, and right. they can't point fingers at a robot. At a robot. Yeah. 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 That's, the, that's the problem that's happening right now, is that it, people, the, they're controlling societies. Like, the new money is people. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody vote for you, that's a $1 bill, right? If, if a citizen is a $1 bill. Someone who votes for you is a 5 Someone who's willing to die for you, that's a 20 right? And, that, and that's how they're, they're gambling with us. They're gambling with people's lives. And the, we wouldn't hate each other if there weren't governments out there trying to gain control by saying that's right and that's wrong. And we weren't like that before. I didn't want to know what my neighbor was doing or why should I have any say over who, who can marry this person or that person if I live thousands of miles it away? Doesn't affect That's you. not my right. It doesn't affect right. you. Yeah. Of course not. I, you, you know what? You asked what pop culture thing made me cry. Here's what actually made me weep. During the Houston flooding, all these pictures started coming out. And I, I hope I don't get welled up now because it'll seem fake. Do it. Do it. Um, <laughs> do it. Do it. In the midst of all of this bullshit about how uh, black people are this and our people are this and Muslim people are this and men are this and women need to do this and all this. This flood, the pictures that were coming out, the unfiltered ones, not the shit right, that was right. coming through the news, random ass rednecks, random ass black people, mm -hmm. random ass Latin people, random ass Asian Americans who we never get to see do yeah, anything, yeah. okay? Random ass people were putting their boats in the water. Mm -hmm. Random ass people going into houses that weren't theirs to pull people out. This was just off of cell phone cameras. Mm -hmm. And every time I saw that, I would write Americans. How about the dudes That's with the right. monster trucks? 
Yes, those, exactly. But those that's cats were awesome. But that's not the yeah. story that the news wants to latch yeah. on to, yeah. right? That's the story that pulls that pulls Because that us makes in. them lose control. Right. They mm -hmm. lose their money if, if we don't think we're in different tribes. Well, right. They're they're changing the game because the game before was we only saw the news they gave us. Now we have Twitter. Now people in that's Egypt right. got Twitter. Look what right. went and down. They're like that's not so, what happened, yo. Right. I was there, and here's what right. I got. Exactly. Right. You know, yeah. we got Periscope. People can jump on live and be like, look, this is what's happening right now in real time. That's pop, right. pop, pop. There's bullets going off behind me. So they got it. They change. They're changing their game. They're trying to figure it out it's rough how do they manipulate once, us now once yeah. we figure out how to use the internet it's going to serve us right and i think it, it's there's actually a royal society of arts um study online by a guy named jeremy rifkin who's an economist and it's called the empathetic civilization mm. and it's basically his belief that the internet is going to return us to empathy God, like we're, so. we're soft wired to care about each other but like before 9 11 there was no twitter so when 9-11 right. happened, you could almost look at a map of people visiting therapists. The closer to New York you were, the more people would go visit therapists. Right. And all the, it was like a rock hitting a lake and then rings, right? But then when you get to Hawaii, almost nobody went to a therapist. Right. But when Twitter, when Twitter was in place and the earthquake happened in Haiti and the earthquake happened in Japan, people were people gave more money than ever before because they could see themselves mm -hmm. in other people's yeah, other people's faces yeah. and other people's lives. I'll tell you being something. human again if we do the internet right. I, I always feel like, you know, technology goes really fast and we have not mostly caught up. Because we just have That's it. right. We just have it. Because it's great, like you said earlier, with the whole, we have to rewire ourselves. It's funny because I wasn't going to ask you guys, actually, this is one of the last topics I was going to ask you guys. I can talk to you guys forever. Um, is social media, is it just verbal diarrhea or is it something that's really meaningful? It's a tool. It's I a tool. mean, it's a tool. It, has no it has no personality. It has no personality. Almost all of you guys on here are very vocal on social media. So. It's made a huge impact in my life, which okay. it, it's one of those things that catch 22 because I love it and I hate it. If you would have told me 10 years ago, I'd have you know half a million followers. I'm like, dude, am I David Koresh? Like what? Like right. what? You know, like, what, what, what did I do in these last ten years that made me get a compound and have half a million? You know what I mean? Yes. But then it, it also empowers you. It's just a matter of who who has the power, what they do with it, you know, and and how, what their integrity is. Just think about the printing press, okay? Uh, yeah. The printing press arrives in Europe. Prior to that, everything was made by hand. Every book was made right. by hand, and in fact, you had to be specific training to do most of it. It was all religious text, almost all of it was religious text, and those that weren't were basically science, mm -hmm. right? Some mathematics, because, you know, why would we need to learn any of that? Yes. That's that yes. Arab stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But after the printing press, and especially after it got to be, oh, I can just build one of these things, right? All of a sudden, you had fiction, you had poetry. I mean, you did not have it before, but right. it was on scrolls right. and it was right. just for the elites, basically. Right. Who the hell had time while you're working your farm to death <laughs> to write a freaking <laughs> right. poem, right. right? But now you can mass produce not only the, of, the official sanctioned thought, you can mass produce your thoughts, whatever the hell they are. Yeah. And then we have various heretical groups show up suddenly, magically, you know, I don't really agree about that passage. Here's my version, yeah. right? And some people read it, oh, it's printed. That means it's official. Right. Mm -hmm. I disagree too. We're going to be Protestants now, right? That's the same sort of uh, technological shift that happened in the West uh, that is happening now in a way crazier, faster, insane right. pace now. But even in that, like when the when the press came out, it took it took years for them to go. Wait, a newspaper? Yes. Like it took a long That's time. That's exactly right. And so I think. With the, with the internet and with social media, we're not there yet. No. Like, it's this amazing tool that we haven't quite figured out how to use it for mm -hmm. our own evolution yet. Like, we're still kind of walking the few steps back before we kind of catch up mm -hmm. to how amazing this thing is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't understand that we can, um, we can help other nations the internet. We don't, we don't quite get that yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still waiting for someone to kind of give us the tool to go, oh, here you go. This is how you do it. But it's right there in our houses. Yeah. You know, and, and I feel like I, I feel like what's going to happen is at some point, maybe uh, they'll make it free because it's still not quite free. Well, yet. that they that's net neutrality you're talking about. And that's precarious. Like yeah. People, most people. What is it? I don't want to insult everyone who might be watching. <laughs> uh, very careful. Okay. Right okay. <laughs> The average human being of which I'm one when I'm not performing or doing whatever. I'm just a guy walking around watching TV. I got my shows. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we're all we're all fundamentally lazy in a particular way. Those sure. things which come to us easily, yes, yes. which we take for granted, like I don't know, Facebook or Twitter, which are free. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. Right. Okay. okay. But <laughs> no one's up in arms about certain very key issues to what you're describing. 
if I can shut down the freedom of the internet, which really is kind of a wild west still right now. I mean, I'm building stuff whenever I want, buying the oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That's not. I'm not talking about the dark web. I'm just talking dark about web. the regular web. Amazon. Okay, but. <laughs> If you can shut down who gets access to what at what speed, just the speed change, right? That's gonna kill. That, yeah, agreed. Right? But I mean, yeah. like, so the news, like, you can buy uh, um, some some uh, some wires and watch TV for yes, free. Yes, that's true. Oh, that's now. true. So that's you can true. get the news in your home for nothing. That's true. And I feel like once we get the internet in our home for nothing. There'll be a huge shift. Yeah, I think there's people trying to make that happen. Yeah, I like, too. The yeah. thing I like about the internet is I think of it, you know, when John Lennon said, imagine no countries, no religion. No, I think the internet is the closest thing we have yeah. to mm -hmm. one country, all people, all races. Sure. That's the closest mm -hmm. thing we have right now. Mm -hmm. But we're making mistakes with it, sure. Like, we're, we're, we have some problems right now with the way that we're digesting it, but I think we're going to get, get through it. I mean, I have like, information dialogue, the overload. Sometimes I'm like, sure. I literally, guys, oh, me too. I'm, oh, out. Me too. Yeah. I'm out. I'm yeah. out. I've literally hit my well, this is the closest when have, thing when you have the more America followers comments. of your feed. Yeah, you're right. It's almost it's yeah. overkill. Yeah. Yeah. You got to shut it down at some point. Yeah, like I'm like, it's five o'clock. I got to shut it down. It's not even the quality of the information, it's literally the amount. Exactly, it's just like, okay, that's a lot. I need to watch some cartoons now. Sorry, exactly. You know, my friends are like, well, James, did you see my post? I'm like. I have 16,000 followers. On I didn't know about Sawyer. I don't yeah. I mean, like, yeah. seriously, it's like, it's no offense or anything, but, like, sure. today something happened and everybody's talking about it. So I kind of crossed, my eyes crossed, and I said, that's it. Yeah. I can't be on the internet today. Yeah. Oh, I took Facebook much. off my phone. I was like, I need a break. Yeah. I've done that before. Yeah. I, took it off I, I, I have fasted from certain sites yeah. Yeah. where I delete the app yeah. you have to. off of my phone. And I got to be honest with you, man. I felt more connected that's as, right. a, as, a, as a man, as a person, like, I can do this today and not scroll up. That's right. Or not swipe left or what you know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. like I felt like, wow. It's a this is right? what it was like when yeah, I was growing up. Really like exactly. you know, this is what job. it was like when I was growing up. It's my, you know? my job, so it's a challenge. Yeah. Like, if too. somebody took the time out of their day to write me a message, let's say I on know, my on my here. personal feed yeah, on same, if same they here. took because to me, time is the most valuable thing in the world. That's yes. the only thing we don't get back. That's right. It's time. Money comes and goes. But somebody took the time yeah. out of their day. Mm -hmm. I know how much you know how much I feel. I value my own time. So I'm like, shit. Somebody sure. took the time to write this to me. I'm Let gonna me make respond. sure yeah. that yeah. I will go no, do too. whatever. Even if I'm on the toilet, well, I'm gonna write back to you. Yeah. you know, people, at some point. Remember people right. were doing. I don't know if they still do it anymore. I see them on YouTube, and they're all old. Like the most recent one was four years ago or something. People were doing flash mobs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Like these spontaneous. Yeah. Like we're all gonna meet here and do something stupid. You know what you the, know, the, or fun, or you know, political, or whatever. You know what the original intent of that was? Uh. It was a group called Improv Everywhere. Okay. And oh, it was yeah, about yeah, the yeah. fact that New Yorkers, when you walk through the street in New York, you keep your head down. You could always spot the tourists because they're the ones looking up. Right. Right? You keep your head down, people get out of your way. But but you also miss some of the beauty of New York. So Improv Everywhere started doing... Make, look up. Make To make you look up, to make you notice your environment. To me, that's a great way to use yeah. like, like a yeah. tool and a platform that yeah. way. So you know, you want to have... You, I think the free internet is perfect. Is a perfect Perfect thing. Once the, I actually just, I'm just about to write a blog post about this. <laughs> um, uh, I spent a lot of time talking to young new artists of various disciplines, trying to get in, not the one-on-one -on -one kind where you're specifically, I'm a dancer, or I'm an actor, because those jobs depend on other people writing things or choreographing things right. or whatever. But I want to make films. I want to make this thing. I don't know how. I can't. Do I have to go to school and all? And I'm like, you know what? You sound like people my age when none of this stuff could be done. Right. right. But you know, there's a movie called Tangerine. Yeah. Mm. It was shot on cell phones. Oh, that's right. And yeah, if I didn't tell you that, you wouldn't know. No. It was a great movie, too. And it's a, a really movie. good it's a really movie. movie. Like, the, yeah. the least interesting thing about it is that it was shot on cell right, phones. Right, right. Right? It hasn't quite dropped down to the street level yet. Mm. I can just do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. We were talking about the birth of hip-hop before this yeah. started. That was a bunch of kids. That was in the street. Literally mm -hmm. children, from yeah. our point of view, going, you know... I want to make this kind of music, and the instruments don't exist. Yeah, let's build them out of this crap. That's yeah. right. You know, <laughs> and no one helped them. No one taught them anything. Yeah. They just did it because it was necessary for their lives. <laughs> and you know at what? The the, and you know what the engine of that creativity is? The engine, the one thing we have that China doesn't have, right? The engine of that creativity is hope. Yeah, is belief in an American dream. This will work. It's, it doesn't matter what color you are, what religion you are. So, Donald Trump like going after minorities, going after gay people, going after immigrants, that is essentially removing the Big Mac from McDonald's. Yep. Th that's what America's about. 
Like, I was with a Chinese kid in Europe, and and this one girl came up to us after a comedy show, and she goes, I love your accent. And the Chinese kid goes, me, and she goes, no, not you, him. <laughs> and he I goes, wait, that. but what, he's like, what do you like about his accent? She goes, you sound Chinese. He sounds like he's on TV. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, that's so and that's, funny. That's, that's yeah. funny. We forget, like, we have weapons of mass influence yeah. all yeah. over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Cult, that's way more powerful than any weapons we have. Yeah. We yes. have the power to influence people in a positive way, to treat people, to treat each other nicer, to have stories of hope. And that, the fact that we are more creative than any other culture means that we're the ones that still have hope. You know, that, like that's a, a lack of creativity. And as an Egyptian, in a country that once had pyramids, my God, right? And cat gods. What? And now we haven't done shit. Yeah. We haven't done shit because hope is gone. Well, I blame the British for a lot of that. I blame the yes. British. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, sorry. Also, uh, intention. Like we're losing mm. out on our, on, our, on our focus and intention. We're so. Uh, preoccupied with the other person's project, and we're not going. What can, I, what can I do? Yeah, like mm -hmm. my big, my big. This is my big, uh, my big hashtag is make new things. Yeah, right? I like that. I always end things with make new things. Like, go, go. Like the I, pyramids. I like I got to go visit them, and I got to go inside them. And I was like, if I, if, if I was, if I had nothing to do, and me and my buddies had the same project, <laughs> then we could probably build this thing too. You know, like, 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 like. It, that's what it was. It was a <laughs> bunch of people going. We're all gonna do this together, yeah. and it was like the focus and the intention of we're gonna create, and I hey. think we're losing the like, we're gonna create, and we're going to like I'm gonna watch you create. This is what I was going, uh, I was yeah. trying to get yeah. at with the. Um, my Jewish side hates that story. Hey, my Jewish side hates it too. My Jewish side hates it too. This is Louis C.K. Louis C.K. is like, if we throw enough death and suffering at something, yeah. we can make pyramids. The, yeah. down, the downside of all this interconnectivity and technology, though, right, is that anyone can have a blog and they go, Brr, I'm a writer. Yeah. And then they right. get mad when nothing happens. And I'm like, back in the old days, before the flood children, um, <laughs> there was a guy called Brett Easton Ellis who wrote a really great book called Bright Lights, Big yeah, City. And then Hollywood ate him because it was his first novel and it was amazing. It was great. And everyone went crazy and they pulled him out here and it took him a long time. He wrote other books, yeah. but it took him a really long time to be good again mm. because everyone kept calling him Hemingway. Mm. off of his first novel. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's his first novel. Right. I mean, it's great. No one's taking it away from yeah. you. But Hemingway? Yeah. Let's get a grip right. here. Yeah. And it's sort of when the marketing department just grabs your life. That was back in the 80s. Yeah. That's now right. it's that. That's now Millie it's Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown. Brown yeah. that's right. right? They're like, you're going to be this now. That's right. Yeah. Right now. But does she say my prerogative? Who is that? Millie Bobby Brown. We have to end the show, which is not really sad. Damn you. Because I... This is the reason why I brought, now you know why I brought the five of you it's in conspiracy. here. conspiracy. I see it now. Yeah. <laughs> You're working for the FBI. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We are on a list. I'm <laughs> JLJ for the FBI. No, I, no, that's why I brought you guys in here, because you guys are all people I admire, and I know have great, you said you dropped some really good knowledge today, especially uh. on this show. And this is why I do the show. This is why I do breaking into you guys out there. I want to affect change in the world some way I can, and I know it's not just me. So I, I always try to be people on the show that also help affect change, too. And if I can be the conduit to that, I hope I do that for my last 95 episodes. I hope I do that and continue to do that for the rest of my life. That then my work is done. That's all I really want to do. Yeah. And yeah. you five just are great representations. Well, I'm happy. Thank you, man. Thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting so all these cards. and I'm going to be going to shows now. Yes, yeah, right. 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 No joke. I've seen, yeah. I've seen him live. I mean, yeah. you, you, need, you need to. Uh, I don't have any cards, by the way. I'm just going to get you. We're going to do direct information. No business cards. But I'm on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, so first we'll start with the couch. Tell them where they can find you. We'll start with you first. You can tell them. Some cameras. So uh, that camera up there. JeffreyThorne.com. It's G E O F F R E Y. Thorne, T H O R N E. Dot com. Magical. Um, pretty much everything there will get you everywhere else you need to go. I'm on Twitter, but if you can't hang with the big boys, don't mess with my face. Uh -oh. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with him. <laughs> if you can't him. hang with the big boys, I don't play. I don't play. He doesn't. I don't play. Those so fools lightly. Yeah. Brandon? Hey, guys. BrandonLarkins.com. Thank you all for the support. Monogamy, the web series.com. Award winning. Uh, television show and my new show Chronicles of Jessica Wu drops November 19th an autistic superhero who is a female coming on November 19th nice. you, gotta, you gotta talk to him about that like, yeah. sweet uh, I'm TamarKatan.com is my website. All my social media is on there. All my social media is pretty much at TamarKatan anyway. Yes, so, yeah. Crazy. Come to the show. Yes, go yeah, to the show. I'm going to go to the go show. Go see him. He's good. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I'm Eddie Zamora. My 
Social is at the Yum Yum Foodie. That's T H E Y U M Y U M F O O D I E. It would have been Yum Yum Foodie, but I'm sure some like morbidly old beef lady in the Midwest. Did he say from the Midwest? It was oddly specific. I gotta make it work. Charlotte, I'm not talking about you. And that's across social media. All the same. Yo, you can Google Joshua Silverstein, but also I'm at Joshua Silver Bat, like the flying mammal. I like bat. Bats, and, I'm, and I'm on Drop the Mic on TBS yes, yes. every nice. Tuesday night. Cool. You and James Corden. Me and James Corden. And I'm James Law Jr. You can find where all James Law Juniors are sold at James Law Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, exactly. And, uh, and of course, it's the Breaking Into show. And I want I say again, thank everybody who is here, everybody who's watching the show supports me. My 100th episode is on December 11th. Boop, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Congrats, buddy. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah, Bravo. Yeah. Well, exactly. Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us, info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.